Good morning. I welcome you to our online service. We're glad you've joined us this morning. We trust that this service will be a blessing to our own church family and to any others who will be joining us in this service today. We want to begin with a special number. It is Well With My Soul, written by H.G. Spafford at a time of great trial in his own life when he lost his family at sea. Music to that song is written by P.P. Bliss, a very well-known songwriter from the state of Pennsylvania who tragically died in a train wreck. But God used both these men in a great way for his ministry, and certainly we are blessed with the music they have provided us. Before I bring our message for the morning, I have a couple of things I'd like to make you aware of. First of all, we have two gospel tracts being printed that will be available early this coming week, and they will be geared directly to the coronavirus issue. The one is entitled, Responding to Coronavirus in Light of Eternity, and the other one's entitled, Heart to Heart, Security in Uncertain Times. If you will just let us know by email or a phone call, if you would like some of these, we will get them to you by mail or we can drop them off. I have a thousand of each of these being printed this week. Thankful to a local printer who's helping us with that project. And you'll be able to give these out in a very needy time. Secondly, we will be broadcasting this Wednesday evening 
for a midweek service. It'll be at the regular time of our Wednesday night service. Uh, Frontline clubs, the children can keep working in their books on the next lesson, and we will communicate with you as to how to uh, recite your verses and what you can do to keep on in, in line with our Frontline program. Also, we're making a special prayer bulletin that will be emailed to the families that have email. Please call us at the church or email us, text us with any new prayer requests you have to add to this uh, prayer bulletin. It'll mainly focus on the events currently that we are facing in our, in our needy time. And then someone has also asked, several have asked actually, concerning tithes and offerings. I want to thank the Lord for the condition the church is in financially at this moment. We're really at our in best condition we've been in our history. However, it is important for us to stay faithful with the support to our missionaries. So if you would like to mail your tithes and offerings to the church. They will be handled like they are regularly by our treasure, and that is something that we are certainly welcoming, but I'm thankful the Lord has placed us in a good situation right now financially that we are able to pay all our bills and there's no need for us to go from week to week with our offerings. If you have your Bibles, please turn to John chapter 14. Our message this morning will focus upon the Aspect of peace that we can have from God found in, in His Word. I don't know how you're gathered around a cell phone or possibly your computer screen or maybe even have it up on a larger screen. But as you gather around, maybe have something with you to write notes and to take some of these points down. I believe it would be helpful as we consider a theme of peace from God in troubled times. Let's pray together this morning. Our Father, we are grateful that we have opportunity to broadcast this way and stay in contact with our church family. And we also ask, Lord, that you would use this service as a great blessing to each family, each individual that's viewing it. Lord, may we take comfort from your word. May you be honored in our lives personally as we make decisions from day to day, as we keep our eyes upon the Lord, and as we point other people to the Lord Jesus. We ask, Lord, that you would take these tracts that are being printed and that they would be used in a mighty way to touch hearts with the gospel. We ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. This is our second Sunday into this corona unrest. And I use that word purposefully because I believe our message this morning will focus upon the opposite of unrest. It will focus on the matter of peace. When news broadcasts anxiety, God's word proclaims peace. We can have peace in these times, in these uncertain days. And you, my friend, can have peace by taking several steps. As you listen to the message this morning, the very first step is where it all begins. And I trust you to listen carefully. In addition to that, there's a number of other steps. But it's interesting, those other steps... You may resort to one of those steps, or maybe at times you will need all four of those steps to really gain the peace that God has promised and desires for us to have. But don't be unsettled, my friend. You and I can have peace, a peace that comes from the Lord. In John chapter 14, the Lord Jesus Christ begins this passage of Scripture as he meets with his disciples and tells them that he's going to prepare a place for them and that when he comes again, he'll receive them unto himself, that where he is, there they may be also. The greatest comfort is that God is preparing for us a place. But he says a little bit later in verse number 27 of this chapter, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You see, God has promised us that we can have peace. So I want us to consider this morning five steps that you can take to make certain that you have peace. The peace from God in troubled times. The first of those steps is this. You and I need to be purchased by God. We need to be purchased by God. Romans chapter 5 and verse number 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The fact is, Jesus Christ made peace possible to every man. The truth is, without him, mankind cannot have peace. 
Our sin causes us to stand before a holy God condemned. And my friend, no condemned individual can be at peace. When you're a condemned individual, you cannot be at peace with yourself. You cannot be at peace with others. You cannot be at peace, especially with God. But as Colossians chapter 1, verse 20 states, and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. You see, the blood of Christ brought about the peace that we can have with God. Reconciled means to be brought to peace with. So it's through the blood of Jesus Christ that we can be brought to peace with God. And if we accept the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the shed blood of Christ as a payment for our sin, by placing our faith completely in his death on the cross, then our condemnation is removed and we have peace with God. The Bible describes us in Acts chapter 20 as a purchased possession. A pastor is to feed the flock which God has purchased with the blood of his son. And so we are the purchased possession of God. Friend, have you allowed the Lord God to purchase you? Do you know today for certain that you've been purchased by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ because you placed your faith in him and him alone? I would encourage you, if you had, do not have that peace, if you do not know for certain that you've been purchased by the blood of Christ, won't you make certain today? Contact us. Go back to the website and email us or call us. We'd love to help you understand how it is that you can be purchased by God through the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, God wants to purchase you. God wants to because he loves you and he cares about you, and he cares about you that you would have peace for all of eternity. So first of all, the most important step to have peace is to be purchased by God. But secondly, the second step would be this. It would be your picture of God that is important for having peace. Your picture of God. Isaiah chapter 26, verse number 3 says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee, because he trusteth in thee. What's on your mind right now concerning God? May I put it this way? What is your idea of God? What's in focus for you when it comes to God? When the Bible says, whose mind is stayed on thee, it is reflecting to us that a person must be focused upon the God of the Bible. You see, the God of the Bible is not like gods that mankind create. He's so different from the God of man. And we need to picture God as he's described in the scripture. That needs to be your concept of God. That must be your picture of God. Eliphaz told Job in Job chapter 22, verse 21, listen to these words, Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace, thereby good shall come unto thee. Job was challenged. Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace. You see, my friend, you cannot be at peace unless you have the right picture of God. For an artist to do justice to a person whose portrait he's painting, that artist needs to study his subject. He studies that subject for hours, often before he paints, and then with that object being right before him, he begins to paint. He is well acquainted with his object. And that's what a person needs to do with God, to have peace. He needs to know his God. He needs to be well acquainted with God. He needs to have the right picture of God. I challenge you during this time, acquaint yourself with God. Recognize that his love, the Bible describes, is overwhelming. The Bible tells us that his care for us is constant. We learn in scripture that his mercy has no limits. His faithfulness never lapses. His provision never lacks. And I could go on and on to describe the God of the Bible. And with you having the right picture of God, you will have peace. At times like this, you shouldn't look to someone else for the picture of God that you need. You really ought to go to the Word of God yourself and understand the picture that it gives to us of God. You'll say, Pastor, I don't know. I'm not seeing 
that in my picture of God, the things you've described, loving and caring and merciful and faithful. Well, my friend, the truest expression of God that mankind has ever seen is in the person of Jesus Christ. Now let's just consider for a moment an event that took place in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ with his disciples. He was out on the Sea of Galilee with his disciples, and a storm came upon the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus was asleep in the back part of the boat. The disciples came to Jesus very frantic and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And you know what Jesus did next? The Lord Jesus Christ arose from his place in the ship, and he calmed the sea. That's because Jesus did care. It reminds us that God does care. Whether the answer is immediate or whether it's forthcoming, my friend, God cares. And we need to have the right picture of God in order to be at peace. Thirdly, this morning, I want us to consider it's promises from God that give us peace. The promises from God give us peace. All throughout the Bible are promises that we need to claim. We study them in their context, and then we cling to them for our own peace. The psalmist says in Psalm 119, verse 165, Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. The word law in Psalm 119 is one of a number of words that speaks of the Bible. Don't think of it as the rigid commands of God. Think of it as the overall scriptures, all of God's word. Great peace have they that love thy law, your word, your precepts. Have you fallen in love with the Bible? Are you one that loves the law of God? Do you read it for the assurances it gives to you, for the promises from God? Psalm 58, excuse me, 85 in verse number 8. The psalmist says, I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. I will hear what God the Lord will speak. See, our unrest in times like this often comes from the fact that we're not hearing God. Well, I'm not talking about an audible voice. I'm talking about hearing what he's already given us in his word, the promises from his word. Right now in our country, it's become very customary for us to listen to the wrong message. And that's why peace escapes us. Peace cannot be found because we're listening to the wrong message. We really need to be listening to the word of God. Grace, peace have they that love thy law. The promises of God need to be where our comfort comes and our peace comes. In Psalm 29, verse number 11 the Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. You can have peace when you stand on the promises of God. Your peace and my peace comes from the promises of God. You don't need to tune into this message to have peace. You have your Bible there in your home. And you can turn to the scriptures and see the promises that God gives us in the scriptures. And right there in your home, without anyone around you, God will bring you peace. So our third point is the promises from God are what bring to us peace. Fourthly, I want us to notice from the New Testament in Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Our fourth point is that we have peace through prayer to God. Our prayer to God brings us peace. In Philippians chapter 4, the Bible tells us, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We need to ask the Lord for peace about the things that unsettle us all the time. You know, I was thinking about it this way. We become unsettled so easily. I do. I know it's so common for us to become unsettled. Really, our hearts are pretty fragile. The slightest bit of news, bad news, can derail us. It's the simplest things often that bring us unrest. And our fragile hearts need a place where they can be calmed. 
And that place of calming as we go before the Lord in prayer with those matters that are of concern to us, those matters that weigh on our hearts heavily. I believe one thing that is a certain through all that we're experiencing as a nation currently, that in this time of anxiety, prayer ought to really be increasing in all of our lives. And I'm not just talking about more speech or messages about prayer. I'm talking about actual praying. In fact, that's an excellent use of our extra time. And many of us do have some extra time because we can't go as many places and we can't be as busy with the things that we occupy ourselves with. So this matter of having peace comes by praying to God. And friend, there's not a better activity that you and I could be doing right now than taking extra time to pray for our nation, to pray for one another, to ask God to bring a peace to our hearts personally at a time where the world around us is in great unrest. I didn't catch last week when our president asked for last Sunday to be made a day of prayer, but I'm sure thankful he did. I don't think it should take a president's encouragement to have Christians praying, and I don't think there should be just one day for Christians that we really emphasize prayer, but that we would be praying fervently and praying constantly so that God's peace might be upon us. When Jesus calmed the sea in Mark chapter 4, as we were considering earlier, you realize it was after the disciples pleaded with him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? That's like a prayer. Lord, do you care what's happening in America? Do you care, Lord, what's happening around the world? Do you care the trouble that it's causing in my own heart? Yes, he cares, and that's when we see the answer. Because after they cried out to the Lord, the Lord brought them peace. Now, I believe Jesus was going to calm the sea regardless of the needs that they would bring up, but I noticed that it was after they brought a request to him that he calmed the sea. Maybe you don't have peace yet in these uncertain times because you've not taken the time to sit quietly alone with the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, here's my heart, here are my needs, here's what I'm concerned about. Would you grant me your peace? Start there. Let your request be made known unto God. When you think of the words that Paul gave us there in the book of, of Philippians, you know, Paul didn't say anything about the answer coming and bringing peace. He said, let your request be made known unto God. Peter calls it casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. It's the act of casting. It's the act of praying that already brings to us peace, even if the answer has not yet come. We've lifted our hearts of a burden and given that burden to the Lord in prayer. George W. Truitt was a pastor of First Baptist Church of Dallas, Texas, and I've used this illustration in the past. It really is one of my favorite illustrations. George W. Truett pastored in that church for 47 years, and he told the story of a, a man in his congregation that was a young father who had lost his wife to a serious illness, and they had one child, a daughter. The little daughter needed some consoling after her mother passed away. One night before they went to bed, she sat in her daddy's lap, and she said, Daddy, can you hold me for a while? It's so dark in here, and I'm so lonely. And once she had fallen asleep, the grown man, the father, looked up into the ceiling and he said, Lord, would you hold me? It's so dark in here and I'm so lonely. And George W. Truett said, God did. God did hold that man. And my friend, God will hold you in his arms. God will do peace. But we need to go to him for that peace and we need to pray to God for peace. My last point this morning is that we need to be in participation with God. To have peace, we need to be in participation with God. Philippians chapter 4, we're still there, and in verse number 9, the Lord says, those things which ye have, uh, Paul says, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Those things do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Now, the Apostle Paul taught following the will of God, and the Paul lived that way. He, he lived following God's will. 
And I found that if you are not following God's will, if I'm not following God's will, I can't have God's peace. If you're not already doing what's right, then an uncontrolled virus like the one we're experiencing will add even more unrest to your heart. If you're fighting God, if you're fighting a loving, caring God who has a perfect plan for your life, and you're not willing to submit to that, then the peace that the Lord provides cannot be yours. Psalm 37 and verse number 37, we're challenged with this. Mark the perfect man. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. The word perfect there is the word that we get our English word integer from. An integer is a whole number. The word integrity comes from this Hebrew word as well. So we're talking about someone who is not fragmented, someone who is not going in different directions. We're talking about someone who is wholly, completely following the will of God. Mark the man that is following God, the psalmist says, for the end of that man is peace. The outcome of his following the Lord is peace. So you and I need to be participating with God, fully accepting God's choice for us brings peace. Right now, friend, God's choice for America, God's choice for the world is a virus that is breaking our back as a nation, and it's doing so by our own choice. It wouldn't have to break our back if we were looking to the Lord and seeking peace from Him and putting this into perspective according to His Word. But our own self-security, our own self-sufficiency is fraying, and our back is being broken, and it's because we're not following God's program. We're not with God. We as a nation aren't participating with God. Sadly, many Christians aren't living in the will of God. They're not participating with God. Really, the truth is, however far God wants to go with this and however difficult it needs to get, it's up to Him. He's sovereign. He's in control. And I need to adjust my mind and my heart to the fact that I need to yield to Him and I need to follow His will. You know, this wouldn't be happening if it wasn't God's will. I believe it would please God if we as a nation would repent of our sin. I believe it would turn things around drastically if we came to grips with God has laid out for us how we are to live, and we as a nation are going to live that way. We're going to pursue and honor God's word. What is your will for us, God? That's what we need to be asking. And when we ask what God's will is for our life and we surrender ourselves to that, peace comes. And so as Paul says, the things you've seen me do, obey, do those as well, because they're God's will for us all to be doing, and peace will come from God. God will bring peace to the individual and to the nation that will return to him. In essence, folks, to have peace, we've got to get on board with God. That's the final step. Points of my message this morning are to bring peace, the peace from God. You and I need to take these steps, and sometimes it is only in one of these areas that we have lacked, and that's what God wants us to do to get peace. At other times, we need to go through all of them and say, I know I'm your, your child, I've been bought by you, but these other steps are important for me to come to peace. How can you have peace during these times of unrest? Be God's child. Make certain that you have been purchased by him as you've placed your faith in Jesus Christ for salvation. Secondly, have a biblical picture of God. Your picture of God brings peace. Thirdly, claim the promises from God. Through those promises, God desires to give you peace. Fourthly, be faithful in prayer to God. He is the God of all peace, and when you go before him in prayer, he grants you the peace that you need. Fifthly, yield your heart in participation with God. And through that, you can have peace. Our Father, we do pray that the emphasis of your word and this theme of peace, and the places that we have taken ourselves in the word of God, and Lord, we realize there's even other passages that would bring to us understanding about your peace. But I ask, Lord, that you would lead our hearts 
in this, this direction of peace. And I pray for all who've listened to this message and who are considering its truth to be open before you, to make a decision even now in their home to yield their hearts to these principles from your word. And Lord, eternity will reveal what has taken place in the hearts of people and will give you praise and thanks now already for how you'll use this message to challenge hearts. And Lord, we thank you for each family in our congregation. We pray your rich blessing and protection upon them. Those who are out in the workforce and are needed to be at work, we pray you'd keep them safe. Thank you for each one who's doing their part to minister to people who are ill at this time. Lord, may our lives individually bring glory to you, for it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Lord bless you. I trust you'll be able to join us on Wednesday for our Wednesday night service.